So today I wanted to just talk to you about this little, um, it's, a, it's a Channel Master digital converter box. Channel Master CM7000 digital to analog converter box. Over the air uh, digital to analog converter that um, if your TV doesn't have a, a digital tuner you need to use one. Anyhow I've got this box here and um, move the light away. The problem that we're having is just the red light just comes on and you can't power the unit on whatsoever. So I wanted to show you what to check, how to diagnose the problem here. So if you look closely over here, this is the uh, connector from the power supply board to the main board and it's labeled. You can see the top pin is 12 volts, the second pin is ground, third pin is 5 volts, fourth pin is ground, fifth pin is 3.3 .3, and the sixth pin is ground. Okay, so I've got my voltmeter here all ready to go. And we'll just measure the voltages on these pins as labeled. The very first pin on the top was labeled as 12 volts and you can see it's jumping between about uh, 13 and a half to up into the 14 volt range. The next pin is ground. The third pin is 5 volts. And you can see on that one it's jumping between about 5.9 and 6.1. And then the fifth pin was 3.3. .3. That's the important one. That's the one that the microprocessor uses. And you can see it's jumping around 3. Point, it does get 3.3 .3 occasionally. Let's put it on min max and we'll see. High of 3.3. .3. The low is 2.9. That's definitely not enough to keep the microprocessor active. It needs to be in the 3.2 to 3.3 .3 volt constant. So what we can see from this is uh, the 12 volt source appears to be a little high, we'll put it on average, 13.8 volts, that's a little high for a 12 volt source. And let me see the 5 volt source, on average it's about 5.9 volts, 5.8, 5.9, just a little bit high. And we'll look at the 3.3, .3. put it on average here. It's averaging about 3.2, that's pretty close but it's still a little bit low. So of the three sources this power supply makes, two of them are high, one of them is low. So let's address uh, repairing that. It's just going to be a matter of replacing some capacitors. So let me go ahead and take the power supply board out. It's just held in with four screws. So uh, very easy to remove two screws in the uh, front of it here as well as two screws in the rear back here. So we're just going to take that board out of it. Make sure you've unplugged it from the wall first and um, go ahead and disconnect the power supply connector as well as disconnecting the uh, six pin plug from the main board and just remove the screws. So here's the bottom of the power supply board. These are the six pins right here. The first one up here is 12 volts the next one is 5 volts, the next one is 3.3. .3. That's where we were having our low voltage, so that's where I suspect the problem is. So if you follow this one around, it goes to this capacitor, through this inductor, and then to this capacitor. That's called a Pi filter network where you put a capacitor on the uh, input from the rectifier diode, and then a coil, and then a capacitor on the output to filter it. So I suspect that this capacitor right here is the problem. And so that one, um, it's a thousand microfarad at 10 volts. So I have a solder sucker. If you've seen some of my other videos, it just vacuums up the solder. If you don't have a solder sucker and you still want to go ahead and replace these parts, um, you still can. You don't have to worry about it much. And um, I'll just heat this one up right here. And the capacitor will basically just drop out of the circuit. There it is. If you have a, um, I use a dental pick myself. If you don't have a solder sucker, you can just heat this up and put the dental pick through the hole. And now you've got a nice clean hole to install your new capacitor. Same thing with the other capacitor. If you have two leads, you just have to heat them both up at the same time. Take your dental pick, heat it up through there. And you're ready to install new capacitors now. Make sure 
that you use uh, 105 degree capacitors. These are 105s that came out, so make sure 105s go back in because it's a switch mode power supply. Pay particular attention to the value. The first capacitor is 1000 at 10. Uh, the second capacitor is a 470 at 16, so you need to make sure you get them back in the right location. So here's our box once again after I've got the capacitors changed. Now we have a green light. I can turn the unit on and off. And let's measure those voltages once again like last time. As you recall last time the 5 volts was high. Or excuse me, the 12 volts was high. It's 11.9 volts so that's very acceptable at this point. The 5 volt source is 5.187 much much better than 6 and the 3.3 is 3.317 absolutely right where it needs to be just in case you have any other problems with these boxes um, just a couple quick test points that I've had problems with in the past I'll try to just put the meter up here on top of the power supply so that you can see the voltage these two capacitors right here I've had problems with in the past um, 3.1 volts on one side. This one is the 1.2 volt regulator for the core of the microprocessor. It's 1.1. If that voltage ever measures low, then I replace both of these two capacitors right here. One thing I wanted to add that I did replace all six of these capacitors. Two on the 12 volt line, two on the 5 volt line, and two on the 3.3 volt line. These two right here are on the 12 volt line, these two are on the 3.3 volt line, and these two are on the 5 volt line. Uh, pay particular attention to the values and especially the polarity. Like I said, make sure you use 105 degree capacitors as a replacement. They'll last longer that way. And uh, that should get you going again. Thanks for watching.